content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Welcome to Game Plan for Retirement, presented by Chris McIntyre, Northwest Ohio's retirement planning resource. And welcome into the program. This is your Game Plan for Retirement with Northwestern Ohio's resource for a common sense approach to planning for our financial investment and retirement future. He is president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services, Chris McIntyre, back from vacation, back in more familiar settings and back with important information, Chris. We appreciate you being here, but unfortunately not too great news as the Social Security Administration Trust Fund has come out and said that they are one year closer to running out of funds and to being insolvent. So, Chris, what are we to make of this news on Social Security? Well, I think, uh, you know, we're probably all a little bit frustrated that in all the years we've been hearing about the shortfalls with Social Security once the baby boomers retired, that they have yet to do anything about it, essentially, you know, to make a wholesale change to get it funded for the next 50 years or something. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's government, you know, and, um, you know, it, it, the inefficiencies and the inability of them to act as leaders and to take charge and to come up with some viable solutions. And that's the frustrating part. And, you know, and Peter, you and I can both say this because we pay both halves of Social Security and Medicare being self-employed. You know, most people listening to the show today, they paid half of it. Their employers paid half of it. You know, we paid all of it. We want to make sure that we're going to get something from it because we're not going to get pensions like some folks will. So for us, it's even more important when you're self-employed because you're really paying the freight. Absolutely. Well, Chris, it is frustrating, but unfortunately, I think the reality of the situation we have to plan for Social Security probably not to provide as much in the future. And I don't know exactly what those changes are going to look like, but there are a few things they've done before. They've moved retirement age, full retirement age back. They have made more and more of our Social Security income taxable once we get to retirement. Do you feel like those are probably solutions that that we will see being proposed again to try to address the shortfall? Yeah, no question about it. I think maybe one of the things that they could do um, that would be pretty palatable would be to, you know, uh, they only you only contribute to your Social Security fund on a certain amount of income. So it has a cap to it in that hundred and fifty thousand dollar range to keep it simple. And so, you know, there's been talk on raising that to two hundred and fifty thousand or even unlimited amounts. So with Medicare, it is unlimited as much, doesn't matter how much money you make, you're always contributing into the Medicare tax side of things. Social Security's got a cap on it. It's a little more expensive when they take it out of your check. And that's probably why they they put a cap on it. it you know, like you say, they could extend that retirement date for maybe somebody that's 18 years old right now. Hey, maybe their full retirement age won't be until 70 for, for you and I, Peter, it's 67. And for folks listening, most of those are, you know, anywhere from 66 to 66 in two months, four months, that type of thing, depending on when your birthday is. Well, there is a little discrepancy. There's a couple different uh, reporting agencies, the Old Age and Survivors Insurance and Disability Insurance Trust Fund projected 80% of benefits will be payable in 2034, while the Social Security Board of Trustees said that in 2033, only 77% of benefits. Either way you cut it, Chris, it's news that we need to do more for our own financial future and confidence. And so we've got to make use of all of the tools available. Unfortunately, Chris, on the other side, Fidelity recently released a report that said at one point in time, you know, they they had uh, over 299,000 401k millionaires just at Fidelity alone. And because of the downturn in the market from last year, that number has been reduced by as much as one third. So our our ability to uh, save 
and and to build that retirement for ourselves really uh subject to the market and and not a great year last year in trying to do as much as possible uh in in those 401k accounts yeah and you know and that's not always driven by the stock market performance you know when you're dealing with retirees you know they've got a substantial portion typically in that fixed income space or different types of bonds in 2022 was a disaster year for bonds because they raised interest rates so quickly it was like a bond market shock um and you know it it, it is a challenge it, there's a lot of emotion that gets into somebody who has just retired and saw part of their nest egg evaporate you know before their eyes very quickly um, and then they read a report looking at Social Security may have some shortfalls. And, you know, what that tells us on the Social Security side is that that means the trust fund will be exhausted. That makes up the difference. And, you know, I'm a I call myself a Gen Xer, okay, Generation X. I'm not a baby boomer. I was born in 1965. And so you know, there are fewer Gen Xers than there are baby boomers. And with Social Security being a pay-as-you-go system, it has a math problem, you know, not necessarily a funding problem. There are just not enough people paying into it. So that's what we call the math problem. And, um, you know, they uh, it would be nice if they would do some things to take care of that for us. But which means, like Peter's point today, folks, we've got to take care of that ourselves or you're going to have to take care of that to make sure you don't run out of that retirement income or when you need it the most, you're only going to get 80% of what the government's been telling you you're going to get your entire life. Well, and that's why you need a plan, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why Chris McIntyre is here bringing important information, but also making available to you the opportunity to craft your game plan for retirement, to get a written plan for your financial and retirement future. If you would like to take advantage of the offer and the opportunity to get your game plan put together, your game plan for retirement, pick up the phone and give a call to Chris McIntyre and McIntyre Retirement Services, 800-868-1194. That's 800 868 1194 800-868-1194. Yeah, Chris, the, the numbers on Social Security pretty staggering. I think I saw at one point in time there were like 60 workers for every one person that was collecting benefits on Social Security. And now the numbers are more like two or three workers for every one person collecting. So I think you're right there. Obviously, there is a math problem. And a large part of that is because we are living longer as well. More people claiming and collecting uh, in addition to the fact that the Gen X generation is a smaller by number generation than the baby boomer generation. Sure. Yeah. And it's only funded by people that are working and contributing to Social Security. So, you know, if you've got people working part time, for example, well, they're not putting as much money into the system. Um, so full employment is a big factor in uh, in funding of Social Security. So the last thing we really want to go through is a steep recession. So as they are trying to slow the economy down to, uh, you know, stave off inflation, that means people may lose their jobs. And, you know, so the cause and effect of that, uh, you know, can be pretty drastic. Thankfully, you know, here, you know, We've had a pretty good run in the employment picture. Only now are we starting to see that soften, especially in the tech sector. Uh, I, I just read where at McDonald's was closing its corporate offices so that they could email people whether or not they lost their job or not. And it's like, all right, well, that's I guess that's how they do it nowadays, you know? Wow. Yeah, we are hearing a lot about layoffs and the potential for a recession, Chris. And I know 2022 was a very rough year. I misspoke on the fidelity numbers, by the way. Uh, there are currently an estimated 299,000 401k millionaires, as well as 280,000 IRA millionaire accounts at fidelity alone. But that number was one third higher before the downturn in 2022. So again, we need to do as much as we can, but Chris, we 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 saw a turbulent market. It doesn't mean that the end of the volatility and turbulence is, is here though. I mean, we still need to do what we can even after 2022 to potentially protect what we have in one of our major tools for retirement those 401k's those IRAs those are those are the most common and frequently used tools that we have and we want to talk about making the most of them on today's program correct 
Yeah, yep, you're exactly right, Peter. You know, when it comes to what do we do with our money, you know, uh, you know, we use some of our money for growth, okay, to beat the pace of inflation over the course of time, or at least keep up with it. We use some of our money for income, and then we probably use some of our money, if you will, you know, in a in a in an emergency fund or an everyday kind of bucket. So we got a long term bucket an income bucket, and maybe your immediate needs or your emergency funds, if you will. You know, liquidity, uh, that emergency fund's purpose, but it doesn't do much else, does it? That's right. Yep. It, uh, we call it maybe <laughs> sleep insurance for somebody out there. It says, look, I, I want to know I can go into the bank and get $50,000. I don't care if it makes any money, just knowing it's there. Or for some of you, you might have it in your safe at home, for example. Well, let's talk about the pros and cons and, and what works and what doesn't with the 401ks and IRAs, Chris, because that is where the majority of Americans make the majority of their retirement progress. Bottom line, the 401k works very well when the income portion, as you just spoke about, is taken care of by us, by our paycheck, by our work hours, by our income. That's what supports our ability to pay our bills, but it's also what supports the 401k and and allows it to work so effectively, correct? Yeah, that is correct. You uh, you know, you do investments at regular intervals, which is called dollar cost averaging. You don't miss the money because it's coming out of your paycheck. So, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of discipline by the uh, all you have to do is get signed up for it and it's a good win-win. So, that's what's nice about the 401k. And, you know, if you're lucky, your company even matches some of those contributions. So you get some additional free dollars put into it. That's a great way to accumulate it. It might not always be the best way to distribute it, Peter. Yeah, because when the paycheck stops, Chris, I mean, we need to 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 really think about this, that we reverse the course of money. And so what worked very effectively as dollars were entering into the account actually has an equal and opposite impact once we start taking withdrawals, once we're in retirement. Correct. And if you were, you know, aggressively invested during your working years and bought a lot of growth stocks, for example, like Amazon and so forth within your 401k portfolios and your mutual funds, um, you know, a lot of those stocks don't always pay dividends. So when you're retired, you know, you might want to look at investing in stocks that pay dividends because you need that income that comes from them. And then over the course of time, hopefully those stocks grow in value as well. And again, Peter, obviously you can use bonds for the same thing. So uh, bonds pay interest, so you can use that interest as income as well. So what got you to retirement doesn't necessarily mean that's the same strategy to get you through retirement, if that makes sense. Well, and Chris, you mentioned the fact that our our allocation, our appetite for risk and tolerance for the volatility changes over time. You know, one of the great things about 401ks is that they're automatic, they're systematic, you set it and forget it, they're sort of out of sight, out of mind. But that very quality has also led to a lot of people really not paying attention, kind of falling asleep at the wheel and not realigning their 401k investment and allocation as they should. You're right. Yeah. When the market's going good, a lot of times you people don't do rebalancing whatsoever because it's growing. They get greedy and saying, you know, hey, my portfolio went up. I'm not going to take some of my stocks and reallocate them into my bond portfolio to keep me in a, just to keep the math easy today, a 50-50 mix. Okay. And if you're not careful, you end up at being 70% stocks, 30% in bonds, because ideally stocks are going to increase in value faster than bonds by nature of it. Um, but rebalancing is very important, especially once you're into that retirement phase, which could be five years ahead of retirement. Doesn't mean the day you retire is transitioning so that those large drawdowns that you get, like maybe in 2022, for some of you that were invested, like in the technology sector that, you know, at one point was down, I think, 35%. You know, that's a long way to recover from if you're just getting ready to retire. So you want to minimize the impact of that type of market volatility. And that's where bonds can help you in that, in that scenario. Okay, but 2022, that strategy didn't work either. So maybe you look at some other safe investment vehicles. You know, we have a better interest rate environment in 2023 than we did in 
2021, for example. So you have, you know, good rates on annuities, you have good rates on CDs, bond uh, rates are up and coming as well too. So there's a pretty good shift that we're doing for a lot of our clients right now in utilizing, you know, some other safe money vehicles that haven't been as favorable in the past. So the future looks bright for safe money folks to make a decent return. And maybe a good year ahead for the bonds, the fixed income, interest rates, and yields, Chris. And I know a lot of the strategies that you're utilizing there at McIntyre Retirement Services really are aimed to help reduce the risk to the portfolio while at the same time maximizing the income or the yield or the interest that the portfolio can produce. Yeah, you're exactly right. And a good example is if, if somebody was 100% invested in in an S&P 500 index fund, their risk portfolio, the beta would be one, right? So if the market fell 10%, they're going to lose 10% because they're directly invested. If they took and carved off half of that money and put it into something that was safe okay, the, and, and kept the other half in those stocks, they've just cut the risk in, in half or the beta in half. So it would be 0.5. So, you know, trying to get people to understand that relationship, uh, you know, is part of the job of what a, a good financial advisor is going to do for you. Again, Chris McIntyre, McIntyre Retirement Services here uh, on the program discussing the recent news, uh, kind of a reconfirmation of the shortfall with Social Security, which really emphasizes that we need to do as much as possible for our own financial future and well-being and confidence in lifestyle. And what tools do we have available to, to do that? Well, the big ones are the 401ks and the IRAs, those retirement accounts, what we need to know about them, how we need to utilize them them and how we can maximize retirement. That's through having a plan, the game plan for retirement, which Chris McIntyre makes available to you. No cost, no obligation. If you'd like to get your plan put together, bring all of the pieces, all of the investments, all of the accounts together, really take a look at how you can reduce risk, reduce taxes, maximize income, and have that optimal retirement. Pick up the phone, give a call, Talk with Chris McIntyre, the team at McIntyre Retirement Services, and set up a time to put together your game plan for retirement. 800-868-1194, the number to call. That's 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. One one nine four. So again, Chris, we need to do the most that we can, and there are some very beneficial aspects to the four hundred one k. Obviously, the match is a big one. We should never forego that match, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, somebody's going to give you the free money and, you know, they're probably somebody listening to the show today that says, yeah, but if I put money into my 401k, I'm going to have to pay tax on that money when I take it out. The company's going to add money to it. They're just going to increase my tax base. Okay. You know, on the other side of that is, you know, look, I'm self-employed. If I worked at a place that gave me free money, if I put money into my 401k, I'm going to take that. I may only say, hey, they may only match 3%. So I may only contribute 3% to get the 3% match. Um, I may not go above that because I want to do some other tax planning. But just to, you know, uh, put it out there for everybody, look, you know, there's a lot of things you have to take in consideration. But if they're offering you something free, you know, uh, why would you not want to take that? And you can deal with the tax situation down the road. Again, uh, we, we need to understand those implications. And Chris, another benefit more and more is that many 401ks are now offering Roth components. And then the the Roth IRA also uh, a, a option that is certainly worth considering, correct? Yes, we do a lot of Roth conversions with our clients and coach them on should they use the Roth 401k at work or the regular 401k if they're still working. If they're retired, then we may take the the old 401k, roll it into an IRA, and then set up a, con a Roth IRA where we can convert bits and pieces over the course of time, depending upon their uh, individual tax situation. Because everybody's got a different tax situation that's listening to the show today, you know. Most of the people that are listening today, once they retire, will their income is going to drop. They're not going to have the same amount of income coming in when they were working. You know, especially if you made a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year, chances are when you retire, you may not need that much income. You might need five thousand dollars a month, not ten thousand that was that you were earning. 
So there, then your income is going to be a little bit lower. We can shift some dollars that are tax that are forever taxed, like in an IRA, into an account that is never taxed, like a Roth IRA. We have to pay the tax when we do that conversion, and that's the piece that uh, you know gets much more individualized. So you know your tax return tells the story there. That's an important component anytime that you're working with a financial professional to make sure that you're getting, you know, the the right kind of advice because you can pick the best mutual funds in the world but if the IRS ends up winning the game, what difference did it make? But, but one of one of the specific goals that you have for your clients, Chris, is to help them to identify strategies that can minimize the cost of that tax liability. And and most people have never seen that kind of side-by-side -side analysis of available tax strategies and quantified the cost of taxes. That's a big eye opener for, for many people, isn't it? It truly is. Yes. And most folks have no idea what their effective tax rate is unless they do a turbo tax on themselves or something. But if they're just, you know, taking their 1099s down to the, or W2s down to the accountant and they says, okay, you're getting $4,000 back this year. I mean, they're just, uh, you know, I don't want to say oblivious. That's not the word I'm looking for here, but they're just unaware of their current tax situation. So that, which means they're unaware of any tax opportunities that they may have as well. <laughs> content getting the check back, but maybe not content with that also meaning that we may end up owing significantly more into the future. And that's where we need to sit down and, and quantify that, ladies and gentlemen, and really look at the cost of taxes and the current strategies that we have in place. And that is absolutely part of that game plan for retirement. You need to uh, understand the risks that you're taking, the fees that you're paying, the taxes that you may be liable for, how all of the pieces fit together to maximize income into the future, how to optimize your social security and how to fit the rest of the retirement accounts and dollars into the picture to provide for your lifestyle needs in into and throughout retirement. That's what Chris McIntyre does there. And that's what the game plan for retirement is all about. Pick up the phone, give a call 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. Or you can visit online mcintyreretirementservices.com mcintyreretirementservices.com office is conveniently located across northwestern ohio if you'd like to sit down and review your plan with chris mcintyre in person or if you'd like to do so uh virtually or over a phone call or attend one of his upcoming classes there's always opportunities for you to learn more and to understand what it takes to get that game plan for retirement and optimize your retirement give a call 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Chris, uh, another benefit here with the 401ks and and really another uh, tip to the, to the fact that we need to be doing more. Last year, Congress actually increased the maximum amounts that we can contribute to those 401k accounts pretty significantly. So while they haven't addressed Social Security, they are at least giving us the opportunity to save more for ourselves, right? Yeah, maybe their maybe their perspective is look, we can't fix it. Let's just let them put more money into their retirement accounts to compensate for uh, their lack of uh, effort, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Uh, there, there is two sides to that, and uh, we could probably make some additional comments. We'll refrain for the purpose of this program. But Chris, for all the benefits of the four hundred one k, there are some shortfalls. It is specifically not a fantastic tool for generating income for a number of reasons. I mean, first and foremost, uh, we should typically roll that money at the very least to an IRA to avoid some of the mandatory withholdings when we take distributions, correct? That is correct. And what Peter means by that, folks, is that if you were going to make a $10,000 withdrawal of your 401k funds, the federal government has to, with, they withhold 20% of that. So there's a 20% mandatory tax. And, you know, the the downside of that is, you know, what if your effective tax rate's 12%, not 20? Why would you want the government to hold an extra 8%? They don't pay you anything on that. Yeah, you might get a refund at the end of the year, but they're just giving you your own money back. Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, and, and Chris, there are some opportunities to take control of our 401k dollars and begin to better position them for retirement purposes. Uh, I know a lot of people have old 401ks out there, and a lot of people probably are familiar with the age 59 and a half for the time when we can access funds without the 10% penalty. But 59 and a half is actually another uh, uh, key milestone for another reason. Can you talk about that age 59 and a half opportunity and, and what savers and investors and proactive planners getting ready for retirement need to know? Yeah, the, the 59 and a half threshold for those of you that are still working means you can have access to your 401k account if you want to take and move a piece of it into an IRA you might want to call that an in-service distribution or an, or a direct rollover you're allowed to do once you hit that 59 and a half it's one of the trigger points if you will to give you access even if you're still working and we do you know a, a lot of that obviously for folks I think one of the biggest downfalls of the 401k, Chris, is is the lack of any type of real guidance that we receive on the job site about the account. That is something that you strive to provide there at McIntyre Retirement Services. Yeah, we're in a personal business, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times if you're in the 401k, they may have some sort of an arrangement or something along those lines, but it's with somebody wearing a headset, you know, thousands of miles away that knows nothing about you that can't read the emotions on your face or anything and they may probably have a boilerplate you know nomenclature uh nomenclature that they use you know to talk to people you know where for us it's like look it, it looks like you, you can see folks and say look it looks like investments make you uncomfortable should we talk about safe strategies and they may say yeah that's really what i want to focus on i'm you know i don't like the stock market whatsoever. I didn't have any choice while I was working. So, you know, it, you know, that type of personal interaction is just something you simply can't replace with a headset. Yeah. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the recent news is kind of reconfirming that Social Security may be in trouble in the near future, uh, a 10 year kind of window before they say the trust fund runs dry. So we need to be doing all that we can in the meantime. And that starts with having a plan, whether you are in retirement, nearing retirement or want to know how to retire into the future, having a plan in place will provide many benefits and additional confidence that you are doing the right things with your money to make that retirement goal a reality. And that's why Chris McIntyre makes the offer here on the program that for radio show and podcast listeners, you are welcome to get in touch and he will help you craft, create, and construct that game plan for retirement. Pick up the phone, give a call, no cost, no obligation. 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. Or you can visit online, McIntyreRetirementServices.com. McIntyreRetirementServices.com. Chris, not enough time to get to, to everything that we had planned uh, to talk about with the 401ks, but, but people need to make the most of the tools that we have available, do everything they can. And that's why you're there for any additional questions. Yep, we're happy to help folks. I uh, hope you got a lot out of today's show and, uh, you know, to present uh, some options to overcome some of these challenges that are facing all of us. We always appreciate the insights and the guidance, Chris, and, and for you being here as a resource for so many proactive planners across Northwestern Ohio, but so many more need that help. So reach out, ladies and gentlemen, get your game plan for retirement put together with Chris McIntyre, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. We'll talk to you real soon. Tune into Chris McIntyre's full radio program and visit McIntyreRetirementServices.com for many additional valuable resources, including other great episodes of Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre. Be sure to subscribe. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management, while insurance products pay a commission which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation.